First mistake many artists make is to ignore the importance of composition. When a painting feels weak, it's easy to point to the obvious stuff like the choice of the pigments, the medium, the brushwork. But what if the subject itself is weak? What if the problem is not the painting, but the image itself? That's what composition is all about. Composition is the arrangement of elements in a painting, and it is crucial to the success of the artwork. Ignoring composition can result in a painting that lacks balance, interest, or a focal point. It's important to consider the placement of the subject, the use of negative space and the overall balance of the shapes before starting to paint. A painting is an image above all. It's not just a canvas covered with pigments. Composition is this art on focusing on the image. It is therefore the foundation upon which a painting is built. The very reason for the paint to be laid down on the canvas in the first place. Composition refers to the arrangement of the elements within a painting, such as the subject, the colors, the shapes, the lines. A strong composition can draw the viewer's eye to the focal point of the painting and create a sense of balance and harmony. If an artist ignores the importance of composition, their painting may appear unbalanced, lacking in points of interest or without any clear focal point. This can cause the viewer to quickly lose interest in the painting and not understand what the intent was. By considering the composition before beginning to paint, an artist can make deliberate choices about the placement of the subject, the use of negative space, the balance, and this can result in a stronger, more engaging artwork that effectively communicates the artist's vision. So before you blame your brushwork or your medium for a bad painting, ask yourself if the image itself was worth being made into a painting. With oil painting, there is a simple principle to know. Avoid excess and everything should be fine. Using too much of anything isn't good. Too much paint, too much medium, too much oil. Excess of any kind can be damaging for the painting and for your painting process overall. Using too much paint can result in a painting that's overly thick, takes a long time to dry, which can cause problems. It can also result in crackings over time. It's important to use paint sparingly and build up layers and thickness gradually, so little by little. You can always add more paint later on, but it's harder to remove it once it's on the canvas. Even if you scrape it off, it's hard to get rid of the unwanted texture once it's been laid down. It's also a mistake for oil painters to use too much additives and mediums because it can affect the overall stability and longevity of the painting. In general, just consider the paint straight out of the tube as the ideal paint to use. Try adding as little as possible to it. If the manufacturer is good, they've probably optimized the quantity of medium in the paint already to offer you the best experience. So any extra oil or a medium past this point is just to improve the feeling of the paint slightly, but it should be very limited. Additives and mediums are used to alter the properties of the paint, such as drying time, consistency, or gloss. While they can be useful as tools to use in your everyday approach, using too much can also cause a variety of problems. For example, using too much medium can cause the paint to become too thin and too runny, leading to poor adhesion and paint like flaking or beating up on the surface of the canvas. It can also lead to cracking and yellowing as the medium ages. Using too many additives can also cause the painting to become unstable and susceptible to damage such as fading, discoloration. Additionally, some mediums and additives may not be compatible with each other, leading to unpredictable outcomes. 
And it's important to use additives and mediums sparingly and follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully to ensure the stability and longevity of the painting. By using mediums in moderation, an artist can achieve the desired effects while still maintaining the integrity of the painting. And of course, oil painting is a complex thing. If you begin and you want to have a good start, you can check out my oil painting course, the practical guide to oil painting. If you want to learn more, just have to follow the link below. Oil paint takes a long time to dry. And if you don't understand that, you expose yourself to major issues. Painting on a wet or a tacky surface can cause the cutters to blend or smear. It's important to allow each layer to dry properly before trying to retouch it and before trying to add and blend new colors. Oil paint doesn't dry technically, it's not an evaporation. It hardens through a process of oxidation, which can take days, weeks, or even months, depending on the thickness of the paint, the humidity, the temperature, or the type of pigment, and even the type of oil that you use. If a paint doesn't let the paint dry properly, it can result in a variety of problems like flaking, smudging, cracking. You have to learn how your surface dries and organize your painting process according to it. Your workflow has to adjust to the drying time, not the other way around. It's important to be patient and allow each layer of paint to dry completely before applying another layer or making any corrections. It's not recommended to paint on a layer that's, you know, slightly tacky as it can be very messy to work on that. Try finding a fully touch dry area to work on instead or switch to a different painting. In general, it's a good strategy to have several paintings in progress at the same time. It's a much safer option than trying to speed up drying time with too much secatives or mediums, which can lead to unexpected results like cracking, flaking. Try to make sure the area you're going to paint is fully touch dry and ready to accept a new layer before you pick up your brush. And if it's not ready, just be patient and find something else to do. This will ensure that the paint adheres properly to the canvas, that the colors remain true, and that the painting will have the best chance of lasting for years to come. Overworking a painting can result in a muddy or dull appearance. It's important to know when to stop and step back and let the painting breathe. Sometimes less is more. Just to be clear, when I say overworking, I mean, you know, continuously adding brushstrokes to an area that has already been worked on extensively. It's a mistake because it can result in a muddy or dull appearance. The colors can blend together involuntarily, resulting in a muddy, dirty appearance. And this happens because the colors mix together too much. And the more you rub the brush on the canvas, the colors you initially had on your palette lose their vibrancy because they are melted together. Overworking a painting can also cause the texture of the painting to become lost or blurred. This is because each layer of paint that's added can obscure the texture that you had before. Sometimes the spontaneity of the first initial strokes is all you need and overworking ruins it all. Overworking a painting can also result in an uneven appearance with lots of dull areas. And this can happen when the painting becomes overworked in some areas and not enough in others as some areas have more oil than others and the entire painting looks very uneven which is very disturbing especially for the dark areas. In general overworking causes to lose a lot of spontaneity and adding too much detail or trying to fix every little imperfection can lead to a huge loss of clarity and freshness, vibrancy, knowing when to stop and being confident in the marks you make can result in a much more vibrant and successful painting. So this is what you should be working towards if it's a problem that you're facing. 
final mistake is ignoring color theory. Color theory is very important in a painting as it affects the overall harmony of the painting. And ignoring the principles of color theory can result in a painting that appears unbalanced or jarring to the eye. Really an unsuccessful painting can be turned into something super interesting just with a couple of color theory tips and tricks or a couple of rules that you have to follow, but you have to know them first. It's important to take the time to learn the basics of color theory and how to apply it to your painting. I've got plenty of videos about color theory, so I'm not going to repeat myself here, but I want to focus on what it can bring to improve your paintings overall. The first benefit is in color mixing. Understanding how colors mix together can allow an artist to create a wide range of colors and variations in their painting. It can be the difference between, you know, a successful skin tone color and a portrait that's way too yellow or too orange, for example. It also helps with color harmony. Using complementary or analogous colors can create a sense of harmony in a painting. Complementary colors are opposite to each other on the color wheel while analogous are next to each other so they create different types of moods and by using these color combinations an artist can create very cohesive and visually pleasing painting even if all the rest is not great good colors can really make the painting stand out color theory can also help with contrasting values or hues and create some depth in a painting. By using a variety of light and dark colors or warm and cool, an artist can add contrast and visual interest to their paintings. That's how artists can suggest different moods and emotions. For example, warm colors like red and orange can create a sense of energy and excitement, while cool colors like blue and green, cyan can create a more calming and soothing effect, and you can harmonize those effects and you can balance and create something really interesting. Experimentation and practice obviously are key here to developing a strong understanding of color theory and how to apply it in a painting. And there would be so much more to cover with color. It's a huge subject. So if you want to uh, have a look at another video, you can click here or here. A huge thank you to all my Patreon members. This video wouldn't be possible without your support. If you want to join the community, You'll find the link in the description below. You'll also find the links to both my courses, my oil painting course and my cutter course. All right, that's it for today. As always, my friends, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.